All right, so welcome back everyone to our video series on 300 Blackout, talking about what bullets are out there, what we, what we can find, what we can use. So the first thing we're gonna start out with is kind of the lighter weight bullets. And this to me is kind of new ground that I've been exploring recently. And I think the big thing that kind of triggered it for me to kind of move to some of these lighter bullets was just looking at some of the data. Uh, Mr. Guns and Gear on YouTube, he had a good video on 300 Blackout maybe about a year and a half ago going through some of the data. And it's pretty clear with the 110 grain bullets, they're going to give you the velocity and the amount of energy you kind of need in a self-defense or hunting type situation. And when you maximize uh, these bullets in terms of velocity, um, they're pretty much the equal of a 7.62 by 39. Uh, so it's, it's right up there competing with it for sure. So with these uh, 110 grain bullets, the first ones that I got into are the ones here in the middle. And they're the Nosler Varmageddon. Now this is another example where you kind of have to um, watch uh, all the different vendors out there for different deals. So even in the midst of all this stuff going on, uh, Mid-South Shooters, for instance, they had like a bulk purchase of these Nosler of Armageddon's. Uh, I think it was $250 for like $64 bucks or something. So uh, I jumped on that and I have found these to be pretty good hard-hitting bullets so far um, in the testing that I've done. And I'm seeing, I've not even kind of maxed out yet on my load development and we're going to have to do some checking with the chronograph, but I'm already pushing close to 2,400 feet per second with these. Um, so pretty good bullets. I've also researched them a bit and found that um, they seem to have a good reputation. The accuracy so far for me seems pretty good. It is kind of a varmint type bullet. So um, basically you, you have that flat base. A lot of people don't like flat base bullets. You know, they're a little bit harder to load, but I've not found an issue with these yet. Um, I haven't had to use an expanding die. They seem to seat just fine for me. Um, and like I said, it's basically kind of like a varmint type bullet, which you'll kind of find with a lot of these 110 grain bullets out there. But real happy with these. I have actually another order of these on back order. So this is a bullet I kind of plan on using extensively uh, over time. And I'm going to continue playing with this. And I think also I'm going to try some different powders out as well. To see what kind of results that I can get um, out of these and kind of come up with you know what my my best powder is um, for these so I, I plan on you know this is going to be a long-term proposition for me uh, with these Nosler Varmageddon's all of Nosler's products I have to say I really like a lot and uh, I've not yet found any of their products where I'm like oh man that sucks or whatever I always find that the quality and accuracy is there and so it's just kind of a thing that I've just found and, you know, no bias one way or another. They just seem to kind of work real well, whatever, whatever I use from Nosler. So, uh, again, this is a thing where, yeah, watch out for those deals because, you know, I, I felt I got a decent deal on these in the middle of all this stuff going on. So that's your Nosler of Armageddon's there. Another bullet which uh, seems to have a good reputation, 300 Blackout, people have been using it probably from the beginning. Um, is the Hornaday VMAX, the 110 grain bullet. So with these, this is a thing where um, I've only just actually bought these. And they seem to kind of go in and out of stock, but I guess, you know, Hornaday, they're cranking them out, you know. Uh, seems to be a similar type bullet to your, your uh, Nosler of Armageddon there. And I have not yet um, loaded these, so I've not yet had kind of a chance to, to do any kind of load development, but um, they seem, you know, fairly similar to one another. Uh, maybe a slight little bit of difference there with the, with the Nosler, I guess, but uh, anyways, but uh, yeah, seem to be kind of similar uh, to one another. So um, this is something with these Hornaday VMAXs. I kind of see this as perhaps a a uh, good alternative to the uh, Nosler of Armageddon if they're not available. So one of the things I always like to do is develop um, different loads and use different bullets. So that way I'm not totally dependent if one bullet's out of stock and I can't get them. 
The other thing too with it is that I like to kind of open myself up to where, um, let's say for instance, I can find a really good bulk purchase uh, of these types of bullets. Well, then that's a thing where, uh, hey, you know, if I can find, uh, you know, like a cheap bulk pur purchase of a, a thousand or two thousand or three thousand, then I can jump on that and use these and, you know, if they're kind of the equivalent of another type of bullet I like, then hey, cool. So I always like to kind of uh, leave myself some options. So that's the Hornaday VMAX. Like I said, they seem to have a good reputation. I haven't heard anybody complaining about them for 300 blackout. So it'll be interesting, inter interesting to kind of work on these a bit and see what we can kind of get with these and, and how that goes. Another option, which I don't really hear about a lot, and this was a thing where these Nosler of Armageddon's were out of stock, uh, the VMAXs were out of stock, and one vendor out there uh, had some of these Sierra Varmeter 110 grain hollow point uh, rifle bullets. I haven't heard of folks using these too much for 300 blackout, but I have heard a little bit uh, of you know people mentioning that they've loaded loaded for these before. A uh, little bit of a different type of bullet um, compared to the um, to the V Maxes. Of course, you kind of have your hollow point. You don't have a plastic tip in there or anything like that. So this is a this is a deal where um, I don't know a whole lot about these, but because you know other bullets weren't in stock or whatever, I'm like, hey. Let's, uh, let's throw these into the mix and kind of let's see what we get. So I got a couple hundred of these and we'll experiment with them. I'm expecting that, you know, easily we should be able to get 2,300, 2,400 feet per second out of these. And uh, I believe whenever I looked at the Sierra data, um, I know one of the powders, they had it, uh, you know, they had it up to, to 2,400 feet per second. So I'm thinking in, in kind of in that range. So uh, all of Sierra's stuff, again, kind of like Nosler, it seems, you know, pretty solid. And so, um, you know, uh, we'll see what we get. Uh, like I said, I don't really um, know a whole lot about them or know a lot of people that load them for 300 blackout. So, you know, let's see what we kind of get out of it and see how it goes. And again, it goes back to, hey, you know, open yourself up to other options. So this is something where maybe if I don't use these all the time, uh, it's a thing where I can kind of develop a load for it and then in the future if other types of bullets are out of stock Then I kind of have that down that recipe down on paper that I can kind of draw from that experience So again, it's a thing where if I find that bulk deal uh, For these types of bullets I can jump on that and you know away we go so looking forward to kind of um, loading these 110 grain a bit more, you know and uh, the Nosler so far have done really well, so we'll see how we go with the VMAXs and this in the Sierras. And we'll also kind of be mixing in different powders too, in terms of you know what kind of results can we get with some of these different powders out there as well. All right, so next video, um, we're going to move on to 125 grain bullets. See a couple options with that. Some of these I only just bought recently. And um, we'll start moving up the weight scale with the 300 blackout. All right, thanks everyone for watching. Any questions or comments that you have, let me know. And y'all have a good one.